Welcome to WDW Escape, brought to you by WDW Magazine. In this episode, we present a magical moment, Adulting at Disney, Behind the Seeds, written by Rain Blanken, which first appeared in issue 69, June 2019. After 15 years, my husband Todd and I have finally figured out a few of the things we actually like doing together. That sounds kind of harsh, but we have a full-on Paula Abdul opposites attract thing going on. He's the cartoon cat. We share a sense of humor, some music taste, and of course a love of Disney. But that's about it. He cooks like Remy. I just love to eat. I'll never understand his zen-like fascination for power-washing the driveway, and he isn't much into reading the Star Wars Extended Universe. But we love a good project. We grow closer as we get inspired, learn, and create something. We're not trying to install shiplap, though. There's a thin line between let's learn together and what have you done. So we keep it light. Gardening is right in that sweet spot. Hey, if it goes horribly wrong, I can just go inside and not look at it for a while. And if binge-watching HGTV has taught me anything, dreaming up a project is just as fun to do together as the actual building. So, when date night rolled around, we headed to Epcot's Land Pavilion to get hyped about our next garden project. While the aesthetics of Epcot are delightfully stuck in the future of the 80s, there's always something new to learn. Our plan was to jump on the Living with a Land ride, then take the the behind-the-seeds tour for a deep dive into innovative garden techniques. When you arrive at the Land Pavilion, I recommend first snagging your reservations for the the behind-the-seeds tour. This tour takes you in the backstage area of the Living with a Land ride, and tells you all about Disney's unique methods for growing over 30 tons of fruit and vegetables each year. That's so much frushy. The kiosk for Behind the Seeds tour reservations is located between Soarin' and Living with the Land queues. Pick a reservation that will allow you time for both the line wait, it's posted outside the ride, and ride length, a whopping 14 minutes, on Living with the Land. Going on the ride first is an absolute must to get you excited for the tour. If fish farms and nine-pound lemons don't say romance, then I don't know what does. Okay, it's educational, but this ride actually has some tunnel of love charm at the beginning. As you take in that signature scent of Disney water dark ride and board a boat to sail into the dark and stormy rainforest. For the first five minutes of the ride, you'll float through several different habitats as an admittedly soothing voice, Mike Brassel, who you'll recognize from Magic Kingdom's People Mover, explains which plants can grow in the desert and why you're suddenly looking at an animatronic buffalo. Your ride includes a jaunt through the Red Light District. Well, it's a fish farm, but this room is really very red, and I promise it doesn't smell like fish. This offers just a peek at the type of operation Walt Disney World has working to provide 5,000 pounds of fish to resort restaurants each year. This explains why Disney fish and chips taste so magical. There are also two hidden Mickeys lurking in the depths here, so keep your eyes peeled. One of the big takeaways for my husband and I were the various methods of growing in each greenhouse. Mist, wind, and soil conditions here have been tweaked just right to grow gorgeous plants. That nine-pound lemon tree actually grew a 15-pound lemon in 2011. But there were simple changes we could make to our garden at home. Todd took one look at the vertical planters and immediately started postulating how to make his own out of PVC pipe. I pictured our yard lined with an army of PVC pipes and immediately started postulating how to distract him. Priced at $25 for adults and $20 for kids, the the behind-the-seeds tour clocks in at the cheapest of all the Walt Disney World backstage tours. 
There are 15% discounts offered to DVC, AAA, and annual pass holders. It lasts about an hour, so plan the rest of your Disney day accordingly. Our tour had about 20 people in tow, just enough for our guide to wrangle us at various stops to explain our diverse and downright wacky surroundings. Our first room was full of bugs. We learned that Disney raises parasitic wasps to control leaf miner flies, which are voracious plant eaters. This would be the first of many outside-the-box approaches to gardening, and the first I would shut down before Todd got any ideas about filling our backyard with tiny wasps. We toured the greenhouses in reverse order as they appear on Living with a Land ride, and the ride boats were fully visible as we walked through. I couldn't help but wave to the ride guests and even try out my best robot moves. Disney animatronics are so realistic these days. In the first creative greenhouse... I mentally prepared myself for Willy Wonka to pop out at any moment. A wash with gleaming white pipes, aquaponic tanks, and rotating trays. This is where vertical gardens float on suspended conveyors through the space, steadily circling other plants on their own journey through root misting boxes. This living laboratory just scratches the surface of the 2.5 five million square feet of working greenhouses on Epcot property. As we explored the creative desert and tropical greenhouses, we were introduced to gardening techniques we could take home, like growing tomatoes on a trellis. The infamous tomato tree here actually set a record in 2006 as the largest and most productive tomato plant. It reared 32,000 tomatoes in just 16 months. We should at least give it a shot in our backyard, right? We were treated to hands-on experiences throughout the tour, which can vary depending on when you take the tour. We greeted the shy, sensitive plant, fed the fish, tasted fresh, Disney-grown cucumber, and smelled mystery spices. Other reported experiences include ladybug releases and pumpkin seed germination. After your behind-the-seeds tour, you could hit up reservations at Garden Grill, where you'll rotate past the living with the land scenery, or grab a quick bite at Sunshine Seasons. You may just be eating some of the vegetables and fish grown right on Disney property, and it's a good time to touch base and discuss your shared experience. This is part of my movie and a dinner theory. Go to the movie first. Then you'll have something new to discuss over the meal. Sitting over some delicious Disney food, it's time to illuminate the possibilities. Name three things from the tour that you can do at home. What plants did your partner absolutely love that would work in your climate zone? What could you create in just one day to change how you garden? Is an aquaponics setup complete with fish, plants, and a filtration system something you're willing to negotiate? For poor Todd, that answer is still no. But we are currently in the market for a nine-pound lemon tree. You have been listening to WDW Escape, presented by WDW Magazine. If you enjoyed this magical moment, you're sure to love the all-new content in every issue of WDW Magazine. Still missing Walt Disney World? Subscribe to WDW Magazine at www-magazine.com. You'll be transported right back to your happy place. Use coupon code PODCAST for $10 off an annual digital edition. From all of us here at WDW Magazine, have a magical day.